Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today we give God all the glory, all the honor, all the praise from Houston, Texas. God is getting the glory, the honor, and the praise for his goodness, for his mercy, and for his grace. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We adore, we esteem, we magnify, edify, glorify, and exalt him for all that he's done and for all that he's yet to do. We bless him for his goodness, for his mercies, and for his grace. He is the King of kings and he is the Lord of lords. So we just thank him for safe travels over the byways and highways. We thank him for each and, each and every one of you that's joining us today on our live streams. God is getting the glories. And those that will be viewing us later by video, we give God glory on and praise for you as well. Let us pray. Now, Father, as we come this morning, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise for you're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be glorified, worthy to be edified, worthy to be magnified. And Father, you're worthy to be exalted. As we enter your presence this morning, we repent of all sin, all iniquity, ungodliness, unholiness. Father, everything we have done, say it, thought, imagine that would keep you from getting all the glory. We repent even now in Jesus' mighty name. Now we say, Holy Spirit, thou art welcome and I will miss. Just release a fresh anointing, a fresh oil, a fresh fire for your kingdom and for your glory's sake. We ask it now. Bind Satan and the powers of the enemy that would come against your will by the power and the authority given in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, Father, shift this atmosphere. Put us in unity and put us on one accord for your kingdom and for your glory's sake. We ask it now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Those of you that have your Bibles that are joining us today, turn, if you will, to 2 Kings, the fifth chapter. 2 Kings chapter 5. I want to deal with the story of Naaman and the healing of his leprosy today. And, and just give you some insight and give you some, some more revelation and some more... Uh, measures of kingdom uh, in this word as to what God is doing through this particular scripture for the body of Christ. It is the will of God that you are restored. It is the will of God that you are made whole from your sicknesses, from your diseases, whether that's a, whether that's a disease, that's a blood disease, whether that's, that's a blood, uh, disease, that's a fleshly disease, or whether you're just sick mentally. God wants to heal you of all of your sicknesses and all of your disease. In this season and in this hour, you're going to find that God is doing unusual things to bring the body of Christ into the place that they need to be for divine healing. We're living in that season of the great measures of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, great measures of the glory of God that's being released in sanctuary services and into the atmosphere. The unexplainable is taking place in this season. The unexpected expected is coming forth as never before. So today we're giving God the glory, the honor, and the praise for the strategies that he's given the body of Christ, the sons and the daughters in the kingdom, to begin to maneuver and to move in the spirit to see dramatic breakthrough of signs and wonders and miracles taking place in their life today as never before. So we give God the glory, the honor, and the praise for it now in Jesus' name. For those of you that may be viewing me in my stream look a little dark, I do apologize for that. I am traveling today and I am in a hotel room, so just if just just bear with the darkness, but we're gonna we're gonna see to it that you get the word of God and that he begins to shift your spirit uh, uh, according to his will. Look at Naaman chapter five and verse number one. It says now Naaman, captain of the host of king of the king of Syria was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. Look at Naaman. Naaman was a warrior. He was a mighty man of valor. Not only that, but he was a warrior. He moved uh, uh, in, in that remnant of authority to defend and to fight and to defeat the enemy. Let me tell you something. There are many of us as sons and daughters today that are dealing with things where we've got to position ourselves that we become warriors through the word of God, that we become warriors through the Holy Spirit, that we shift our mindset and just allow the will of God to take place. Now, now we know the Bible talks about God fighting the battle and God giving you the strategies. And in this particular passage of scripture today, that's what I want to give you is strategies to defeat your enemy, strategies to defeat your adversary. So Naaman had a flesh disease. He was a leper. He had a sickness over his body. Look at the next verse. It says, And the Syrians had gone out by company and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid. She waited on Naaman's wife. Look at the next verse. It says, And she said unto her mistress, Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Syria, 
for he would recover him of his leprosy. Look at the next verse. It says, And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus, and the maid that is of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go to go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver and six thousand pieces of gold and ten changes of raiment. Look at the next verse. It says, And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now, when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. Now this is going to the king of, of Israel. And look at the next verse. It says, And it came to pass that when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he rented his clothes and said, Am I a God to kill and to make alive that this man doeth sin unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore, consider, I pray you, and send through, and let me read that again. Wherefore, consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. Now, the king is upset. The king of Israel is angry because a letter came to him. And now, look at this next verse. It says, And it was so when Elijah, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel rented his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rented thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Look at the next verse. It says, Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elijah. Now, when God has a purpose and God has a plan for your life, I want you to understand that God gives you favor. One of the things a lot of folks don't understand is that God will give you favor. Now, one of the things Naaman had, if you look at this particular passage of scripture, he had favor with the king because he had he was a mighty man of valor. In other words, he positioned himself to be favored in the eyes of the king. Now, as sons and daughters in the kingdom, some of you, some of you have positioned yourselves to receive the favor of others. Now, when I say position yourself, in other words, you may not be a mighty man or a mighty woman of valor, but your life is pleasing before the Lord. Your life is acceptable in the eyes of the Lord. And as a result of that, you position yourself to receive miracles, signs, and wonders. And guess what? God will favor you with those in high places. Now, catch this. Naaman was favored by God with the king in a high place. <coughs> Excuse me. So, because of his experience, because of his ability to win wars, because he subdued uh, Syria and winning the battle against them, as a result of that, he had favor with the king. Now, because he had favor with the king, the king would do whatever was necessary to see to it that Naaman received his healing. Why? Because he was a mighty man of valor. Guess what? He was an important man. Let me tell you something. As sons and daughters in the kingdom, you are important in the eyes of God. You may not be important in the eyes of this one or that one or the other one, but you're important in the eyes of God because God has purposed, he has ordained your life for a time and a season such as this. There are many out there today across America, across the world, that are sick in their bodies. And see, in this particular passage of scripture, Naaman, or the king, sent money to the prophet, or to the king of Israel. And when he sent this money to the king of Israel, the money was sent to the king to uh, basically heal Naaman, or to give Naaman the instructions, and I'm paraphrasing, give Naaman uh, uh, what is necessary for his body to be cleansed of the leper. But the Bible says the king of Israel became angry. Now let me tell you something. There'll be times you'll be sent before people and you'll be sent before folk. They won't understand and they won't accept the, uh, the instructions that have been released where you're concerned. Now guess this, one of the reasons is because they're not walking in the understanding uh, or the measure that is required to receive that message or that letter that is sown. Now, what do you mean when you say that, Apostle? There'll be times that, that someone will favor you and they may send you the wrong direction or they may send you to the wrong place. Now, now catch this. The king sent Naaman, his servant, to the wrong place. 
He sent them to the, in, in other words, and the sons and daughters in the kingdom, you'll find yourself in the wrong place, in the wrong time, in the wrong season, but before a great man or a great woman of God. Catch what I'm saying. You'll find yourself in a place where you don't belong. You'll find yourself in a place where you're out of place. You'll find yourself in a place of expectance, and you'll find out that in that place of expectance that you are, the people that you're around or the people that you're amongst can't do anything for you. In other words, when God has a timing and God has a seasoning in your life, he will put you on the path. In other words, he will send you the direction you need to go, but the person you're going to may not have the solution to your problem. But they may be connected, catch this now, they may be connected to that individual that does. Now, catch this, the king of Israel didn't have what Naaman needed, but he was connected to the prophet, and the prophet, Isaiah, had what Naaman needed. He had the, 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 he served the mighty God that moved in signs, oneness, and miracles and demonstrations. So although Naaman was on the path to healing, guess this now, you can be on your path to deliverance, you can be on your path to victory, but there may be, there may be a hindrance, or you may be headed down the direction the Lord is leading you, but you may, you may hit a, a, a obstacle, or you may, you may run into a roadblock, see what happened with Naaman was they ran into a roadblock, the roadblock was the king could not answer the request, or the king could not move in the measure of the, of, of healing signs, wonders, and miracles, because he didn't understand that measure. But now, he was connected to a man uh, that knew signs, wonders, miracles, and, and, and demonstrations, the prophet Elijah. Now, he become, the king becomes angry. Guess this. There will be a time that you'll be sent to somebody and they will come, they will become upset, they will become angry because they don't understand the process. They don't understand what God has given you. You got to remember this. Naaman was immediately put in a process with the maid told uh, his, her, his wife how he could be healed. Now, he had to follow through the process to receive his miracle. Now, guess this. Many believers lose out because they fail to follow the process. They'll be sent a certain direction. God will put them on a certain path. And instead of them staying on the path that God put them on, they'll listen to some outside source. And that outside source will give them instructions that's not in line with the will of God, that's not in line with the purpose of God. And as a result of that, they will find themselves struggling, trying to figure out what's going on. Naaman went the course that he was sent, although it was a roadblock. Now, he could have quit, he could have stopped, he could have given up, and he could have went back. But he instead, the king <coughs> excuse me, became furious. And as a result of that, Word got to the prophet. So rather than Naaman having to be sent back, the prophet sent to the king a letter and told the king, and sometimes God will send you a message. Guess this, your message can come through a prophet or a prophetess, or, or it could be something as simple as is seeing something uh, in the word of God. God can speak audibly through his word directly to you. And as he begin to speak directly to you, all you've got to do is line up with the word of God. And when you line up with that word, you'll begin to see your miracle. You'll begin to see manifestation. You'll begin to see that change take place in your life. Sometimes it, 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 it's not the easy things that, that are, are the hard things that will bring your deliverance. But sometimes it's simple things, just simple as following instructions. The king sent sent Naaman to it, the king of Israel, and the king of Israel refused to do anything, but the word got to the prophet that was connected to the king. Let me tell you something. When God has a plan in your life, when God has a will in your life, he will connect you with the right people. Catch what I'm saying. We're living in the seasons of connections. It might be direct connection, or it might be connections through other sources, meaning that you'll meet this person to go to that place. In other words, this person has the connection where you need to go next. So you've got to follow the order of God. You'll say, well, Lord, this don't make sense. It, 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 if it made sense, it would be too easy. 
But if you follow the order of God and move the way God leads and guides you, you will find yourself lining up with the will that God has ordained. You will find yourself lining up with purpose and destiny. Sometimes purpose and destiny may look strange because it doesn't look like what you anticipate or what you expect. When Naaman got to the king of Israel, what he expected was not there. When he got before the king, they said the king was angry because he felt like they wanted him to work a miracle or they wanted him to do something that, you know, kings set on the throne. They rule. They don't get their hands dirty. They give orders. They give instructions. So here, now catch this now. Now the prophet is connected to a powerful source. Sometimes God will connect you with powerful sources. And when he connect you with those powerful sources, he does it for a reason. He does it so that you, as a son or daughter, can be connected to the right source. Let me tell you something. You might be connected to a school teacher. You might be connected to a pastor. You might be connected to, to a business associate, associate or, or, or someone uh, in law enforcement or someone that's a lawyer. And they may have the connection of a channel that you need to go through to get your deliverance or to get the answers to what you need. But the best connection is God. And see, although the word came to the king from, the, from a woman of God who was an Israelite, who was a slave, who was taken in captivity. And let me tell you something. Sometimes people's destiny can bring your deliverance. Sometimes people can be put in a certain place that of unexpectancy, and they'll say, I don't know why I'm here. I don't know why I'm in this place, but I'm going to stay here until the Lord says different. She was in a position of a servant. And guess what? Because she was in a position of a servant, she, she, she was in the divine timing. She was in the perfect will of God. Sometimes as a servant, you could be in the divine timing and the perfect will of God to move in the life of someone else. See, your life is not your own, but your life can play a vital role. If you go back and you look in the word, when 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 the kings had dreams and, and, and they would send for this one, they would send for this, they would send for the super sales and the magic workers and, and all the psychics to reveal the dreams that the kings would have. But no one could reveal those dreams, but in some cases Daniel. And, and when Daniel came in, Daniel would reveal the dream. But guess what? Daniel was in a particular place and, and, and because he was in that place, he was favored by God. And he was put in a greater place, a greater measure, over kings and over, over princes because of the spirit, the Holy Spirit that was on his life. Let me tell you something. You may find yourself in a place where you're connected to people and you don't know why you're connected to them. But catch this, you connect it to them because they're the channel that God is going to use to take you to the next measure in his kingdom. You're connected to them because they're connected to the channel that has the miracle that you've been seeking God for. They're connected to that source that has the miracle that has what you need to shift you to the next place in God. But you've got to keep your faith and your trust totally in God. Now, Naaman, in this particular passage, if you go back and you read in the word in Luke, I think 4 and 27, it talks about Naaman being the only man in Israel that was actually cleansed of his leprosy. Now, we know that there were other lepers, but that Naaman was the only one that was cleansed according to the word in Matthew's, uh, I'm sorry, Luke 4 and 27. He says he was the only one in Israel that was cleansed, the word says. But now, guess this, you can be the only one in your generation. You can be the only one in your timing. You can be the only one in your ministry. You can be the only one in the workplace that God favors and moves miraculously so that you will come out on top. You will be that, 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 that one that God will separate. He will pull you apart for purpose and destiny for that thing that he's ordained and purpose your life to. But you've got to see that it is what it is. Let me tell you something. When God is getting ready to do something awesome and mightily in your life, he will put you in a place of uncomfort. In, in other words, he'll put you before kings and before queens, but those kings and those queens that you may be before may not be the ones that, that you are actually looking to, to for the answer. Let me give you a good example of what I mean. You may have your eyes on, on a problem <coughs> excuse me, that you're experiencing or that you're facing, but in the process, you may, talk, you may choose to go through this channel or to go through this door or to go through this source, but the source you're going through is not the answer. But the source you're going through, I want to make this simple, but the source you're going through, know the source that you need. Let me give you a good example of what I mean. Many years ago, 14 years ago, I received a prophecy. I'll say it might have been longer than that. Back in 1999, I received a prophecy in, in, in um, 
Santa Rose Beach, Florida, at Dr. Bill Hammond's church. I was there for an Apostle and Prophets Conference, and I received a prophetic word that I was going to be blessed with this job, and the job that I was going to be blessed with, I had to go through a certain door. Now, all the details was not given to me about the prophecy. All I knew was that just certain things was going to happen and certain things was going to take place. And I was told the Lord was going to allow me to go through a door, and that door was going to be a door of wealth and prosperity, and God was going to show me wealth and abundance. And let me tell you something. To get to that door didn't happen overnight. But because I followed the word of the prophet, and because I listened to the word of the prophet, when the Lord began to bring shifts and changes in my life, the first thing he did was he connected me with a man that owned a single wireless store. And the man that owned the single wireless store hired me. I just want to tell you how God would work, how God would move. He hired me to work in his stores. I was selling cell phones out of the trunk of, 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 of my car. And from selling cell phones out of the trunk of my car, I, I ended up moving into this man's house. And when I moved into this man's residence that I was renting from him, and that's a story all in itself, but I was renting from this man who became my boss because he owned the cellular phone store. Now, let me tell you something. God has connections and God has channels. Now, the door that God needed for me to go through, catch this now, the door that God needed for me to go through was a door out of town. The, the door, see, a lot of us are looking for doors in our locations. A lot of us are looking for the answers in our locations. But I had to relocate into another town. Now, catch this. I didn't go through the door of wealth and prosperity when I relocated. But I went into the store of sales, into the business of sales, selling sell your phones to the extent that I became a store manager. Now, when I became a store manager, I started moving from store to store, uh, uh, operating and, 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 and running the stores on the days that other people was off. I'd step in and fill in the positions or I'd go from store to store and do the work in that store that needed to be done. Then I was promoted to my own store. Guess this now. The store that God promoted me to was 110 miles from my residence. Now, when God has a plan, he does things that's strange. And I was offered the job. Well, first, it was just 87, 87 miles from my residence to the store that I would be managing, which was at that time was, was a was, um, singular wireless store. But and, and I went in that store, and I started working and selling cellular phones. So it was called A to Z Communications. Now, guess this now. That was not the solution. That was the door. That was the door. I went through that door. While I was at that door, I met a man that was having problems with his wife. And when I met this man that was having problems with his wife, he, he was sent to me by a man of God that had met me in the store earlier. And I prayed for him, and the Lord gave him an immediate breakthrough. Now, the man that I met that was having problems with his wife was the chief of the police department. And the chief of the police department started speaking to me. He would come to the store daily and watch me work and watch me deal with customers and watch me deal with clients. See, when God has a plan, he does what is necessary, divine timing. So he come and he come from he come for weeks, he come for months, and he begged me to take a position in his company working in his department. I said, man, I know nothing about the police department. I know nothing about uh, 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 security, nothing about that kind of business. But that was the channel and the door that God was trying to get me to go through. And I didn't realize at the time, but then I realized at the very end of his asking me that I was offered a job to go to work for another company. I guess this now. See, God has a way. You, you would have thought I would have went straight through that door. But what happened was God had to discourage me from the, prof from the profession that I was in. I was a top sales producer. I was making enough money to run the other stores that they could be paid. So let me tell you something. When you're positioned to do that kind of business and you're making good money, the last thing you want to do is step out of that realm into unfamiliar territory. But let me tell you something. When God has a plan for your life, he will put you in unfamiliar territory. And what that was, I was offered a position with AAA. Uh, a lot of you may have AAA. I was offered a position to run a store in the cellular phone business to have my own store in that company. And I went to work for AAA, but the gentleman who set everything up didn't get approval. So what they did was they paid me a month's salary and fired me. Why? Because the door I went through was not the plan of God. 
The plan of God was for me to work with the man who had come through the doors that had the problem with his wife that the Lord allowed me to prophesy to and release the word. Let me tell you something. When God has a plan, he will put people in place. And when he put those people in place, all you got to do is follow the order of instructions. And what happened was I went to work for AAA. One month later, I was laid off with pain. Now, catch this. In that season, we, we find ourselves in a place in Winston-Salem and, and in the surrounding areas of North Carolina of low on unrelated fuel. And I got a phone call from a guy that was going to Banner Elk, North Carolina, but I worked in Boone at the store there, but I had left and went to AAA. And he wanted to know if I would call my friend in, uh, up in Boone and find out if they had unrelated fuel up there. Well, the guy I needed to call was the, was the chief police, the chief of police in Banner Elk. And when I called him, he told me they had the fuel. Now, just like all the work, I'm going through the wrong door now. Catch this. But God put me back on track. Now, catch this. When the Lord put me back on track, I called this gentleman. And when I called him, in the process of calling him, he asked me, will you come and do an interview with me? I've been by the store. I know you're not working here anymore. So I went to do the interview that evening, or the next evening at 3 p.m. The interview lasted from 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. Now, mind you me, the trip I had to take was not 87 miles, but it was 110 miles from my residence. But when I went to the interview, when the man began to carry me through the property, we went through the main entrance. And when we went through the main entrance and I saw the rock quarry, the anointing hit me. And I knew at that time that I entered into the remnant of place that God had ordained for my life to be in. When I went through those doors, 360 millionaires and billionaires was in this place. The Lord wanted me to connect with these people, to get to know these people, to understand wealth and riches, to see the jewel, to see the diamonds, to see the gold, to see the 20 and uh, 10 and, and 3 and $4 million dollar, uh, mansions and residences that these people lived in and to walk around and to, and to get familiar with these people. Let me tell you something. When God wants to show you wealth and riches, the prophetic word that I received in 99, it took me to 2005 to go through that door. From 1999 to 2005 was six years before I entered through the door. You may get a prophetic word, but it took six years for me to go through that door and 14 years for me to finish the assignment that the Lord gave me, praying for people that were stressed out, just, just busted and disgusted, wealthy, all the money you could ever imagine. But the key was this, my assignment was to go through that door so I could understand wealth and, and riches and finance. And go through that door so I can understand how the wealth they live. In other words, God says, I want to show you the wealth. See, when God has a purpose for your life, he will show it to you. And the key is this. The, God's plan was for me to go through a door. Look at Naaman. God's plan was for me to go through a door. But in order to go through that door, there were people in other places that prevented me from going through the door that I needed to go through. Look at Naaman. Naaman was in a position where he had to go through the door, but the king of Israel was his block. But the king, when, when he received the word from the prophet, released him to go see the prophet. Now, guess this. When God has a plan for your life, there will be hindrance. There will be stumbling blocks. There will be people that will get in the way. They will do whatever they can to stop manifestation. When the Lord is trying to bring a healing or a miracle in your life, you will find yourself in a place and in a position where you will wonder how in the world that I end up here. And, and, and every day, let me tell you something, for 14 years, driving that 110 miles back and forth to work, but I wasn't just driving it, the Lord was imparting in my wisdom. He was teaching me knowledge. He was giving me strategies of law enforcement. He was giving me strategies of security. He was giving me strategies of how to operate and run the office in that in that in that mission in that realm. In other words, he put me in another profession, and when he put me in that profession, he put me there to train me to and to develop me to be that son that it ordained and purposed my life to. It wasn't about the wealth. It wasn't about the riches. It wasn't about the knowledge. It was about me getting in and remaining humble, remaining faithful. I wasn't permitted to ask for anything. I wasn't permitted to, to ask these people to join anything that I was associated with, the ministry, to support me financially. God told me not to ask for anything. 
There'll be times that you'll be given assignments. The Lord may not ask you to, he may tell you, don't do nothing, don't say nothing. Just go, watch, monitor, and observe. Sometimes your assignment will just be go, look. Sometimes your assignment will be just go, go here. Why? Because the person you need to meet may be there waiting on you. That's why I said Naaman went through one channel, but the source that he needed to get to was, was connected. Your miracle, your healing, your breakthrough may be at the person with the person that is connected, not the person that you're dealing directly with, but they may have the connection to where you need to go. Because Naaman did what was necessary, he was able to receive his miracle. Look at verse number, um, number. I want to go back down for a moment. Bear with me just a moment. In, um, look at verse number six in Second Kings chapter five. It says, and he brought a letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now, when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have well. I have therewith sent Naaman, my servant, to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. See, the king sent Naaman to the king of Israel. Now, to recover him of his leprosy. In other words, he needed a miracle. Now, not only did he send Naaman, but he sent wealth. He sent abundance. He sent riches. Let me tell you something. The Lord will use people in high places financially to finance and to fund what he's ordained and purpose your life to. He will use people that are millionaires and billionaires to finance what he's ordained. See, if God has given you an assignment, he will finance it. If he's given you an assignment, he will fulfill that assignment that he's given you. In other words, he's able to fund what he's called you. Whatever he commits unto you, he's able to see you through it. He's able to get you through it, through connections. Now look at this next verse, verse number seven. It says, And it came to pass that when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he rented his clothes and said, Am I a God to kill and to make alive, that this man doeth sin unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Therefore, or wherefore, consider, I pray thee, pray you, and see how, he seeketh a quarrel against me. In other words, the king said, this king is trying to be funny. In other words, he's angry. He's upset with me about something. But that wasn't the case. He was serious because the maiden had told him that there was a prophet in Israel that could heal Naaman. But they went through the king. See, you may go through one source to get to the source that God has ordained and call your life to. Look at verse number eight. It says, and it was so that when Elijah... The man of God heard that the king of Israel had rented his clothes. Now, all the, all Elijah, now Elijah's purpose was, I just want to know what the king is upset about. See? Now, now, notice the connection. The king gets angry. Now, had the king not get angry, Elijah may not have requested to know why he was upset. And if Elijah had not requested to know why the king was upset, Naaman would have never got his healing. The reason is, see, see, divine timing and purpose is everything in God. Being in the right place at the right time matters when it comes to God. Because Naaman was in the right place, because the king had a tantrum and became angry and ripped off his clothes, it positioned Naaman to receive his healing. Strange things will happen for your miracle. Things that's unexplainable will happen when your miracle is at hand. When it looks like, and, and, and if you look at that situation, it didn't look favorable for Naaman because the king became upset. See, and when you're in an unfavorable situation through your eyes, when you're in an unfavorable situation, that's when God will come through. That's when God will move miraculously and bring you your miracle. And this is what happened. The miracle could take place. The miracle could happen simply because of the fact that Naaman was in divine timing. Saints, let me tell you something. God wants to give you a healing. He wants to break the sicknesses and the diseases. Whatever it is you're experiencing and going through in your life, he wants to totally heal you of it. But you've got to be in divine timing. You've got to be in the right place at the right time. Look at the next verse. See? In, in, in this verse. Naaman... Uh, 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 Elijah sends to the king. What are you upset about? Why are you angry? Look at the last part of that verse. He says, let him come to me. He tells the king, send this man with the leprosy unto me. He says, let him come unto me and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Now notice he didn't say a God. He said there is a prophet in Israel. Now, now catch this. When God has a plan for you, when the Lord allowed me to listen to the prophet, 
back in 1999, and I've received many prophets, prophecies since then that have manifested in my life. But the prophet in 1999 released a word unto me. And when he released that word unto me, it was my responsibility to follow through the prophecy. It was my responsibility to listen to that prophetic word daily and to know what season I was walking in based upon that prophetic word. Some people get a prophetic word and never listen to it again. Some people get prophetic words and never recall them, call them or never write them down. Let me tell you something. Always record your, use your phone. Record your prophetic word. Somebody say, I want to release a word to you, record it. And then go back and listen to that word daily. Because by listening to that word daily, you know the time and the season. You will actually literally watch it unfold before your eyes. You literally watch it unfold. You watch it manifest. You watch it take place. And you know I'm in the divine timing of the prophecy. Then you begin to seek God as the Lord, now you've got me in this process. What do I need to be doing? Do I need to be praying? Do I need to be reading the word? Do I need to be studying? In other words, then, now, now you're going to be around folk that's going to tell you you're crazy, but that's okay. Be crazy for a season. Because if you be crazy for a season, you're going to have the last laugh. Because guess what? They think you've out of time. They think you've missed God. They think you've faltered or fallen by the wayside when you're in the divine. See, let me tell you something. Things happen in your life to get you where God is ordaining for you to walk. It could be positive or it could be negative. But things happen to get you where you need to be in God. Sometimes you will fall in sin, but in your falling in sin, it will position you to get where God. Let me tell you something. The Bible says all things work together for the good good or bad. That means if you fall in a bad situation in God, or if you're in a positive situation, all things work together for the good. So don't count yourself out because you've faltered or fallen by the wayside. And you, Because, let me tell you something, you will fall yourself, you'll fall, fall by the wayside, and immediately people will count you out. Immediately people will say, you're not this, you're not that. But it's not that. It could be a part of the plan of God to get you into the next place or the next maze of kingdom that he's ordained. When people say, well, God don't cause you to sin. No, God don't cause you to sin, but your sin may be a part of the plan of God to get you into the next place that God has ordained and brings your life to. You go back and repent and falter in line, but see, that incident or that accident or that, that failure causes, it grows you, it matures you. It advances you in your understanding of the importance of your relationship with God. Let me tell you something. If, if, if there wasn't for failure, if there wasn't for failure, there would be no positive results. If there wasn't for ups and downs, if it wasn't for the roller coaster rides, ups and downs, if it, for, if it wasn't for the trials and tribulations that we experience and go through, we would not reach the destiny that God has purposed and ordained our lives to. Look at the kings in the Bible. Those kings were not saved men, but they were favored by God. They were, they were anointed by God to fulfill purpose and destiny. You go back in the Bible and you will find two men of God that God really ordained and really anointed for purpose. Elijah and Moses are the ones I'm talking about. That Not Elijah and Moses. Yeah, Elijah, uh, uh, Noah and Moses that were the ones that had the, the, the sound relationship with God in the Old Testament. Now, you go back to Euclid, Elijah, he was one also that had a relationship with God. But Moses and Noah walked with God daily. They were the two men that walked with God. They were the two men that, that was flawless in the eyes of God. They had a relationship. And Moses was, was an Egyptian, uh, 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 a ruler of the Egyptians over Israel, the chosen seed of God. See, God appointed him for a time and a season. He trained him for 40 years. And when he trained him for 40 years, he taught him the laws of Egypt. He taught him the guidelines and the rules of Pharaoh. He taught him who Pharaoh was. He showed us, well, guess what? He was the son of Pharaoh's sister who picked him up in the basket when he was sailing up, coming along in the, in, the, in the river. She picked him up and adopted him as her son. And, and Pharaoh loved Moses. This is the reason Moses could go back. See, let me tell you something. When God has a purpose and a plan for your life, he will put you amongst kings. He will put you amongst queens. He will put you amongst wealthy men, business men. And, and, and for some of you, that's where you're getting ready to walk, in places of business. In other words, expecting the unexpected, expecting God to do the miraculous in your life. But your timing must be in line, in tune. In other words, it might look ridiculous. It might look stupid in the eyes of other people. It might look crazy. It might look insane. But just obey 
obey the voice of God and move with God because what God is carrying you, let me tell you something. He's going to have you doing things that's ridiculous. He's going to have you doing things that don't make sense to other people, but just obey the voice of God because when it, when it, when it, when it makes sense to you and it makes sense to them, it may not be in the line of the will of God. But when the Lord step you out and say, go do this and go do this and go do that. Why? Because I'm putting you with a new people. I'm putting you with a new mindset. In other words, I'm shifting. I'm changing your mindset. I'm growing you. I'm putting you in a process and I'm elevating you into another measure, another level of my kingdom. I'm giving you new strategies. I'm giving you new missions. I'm giving you new revelation and I'm giving you new access. And some of you are in that place where you're dealing with and you're going through things and you don't know how in the world you're going to make it. Keep your eyes on God. Follow the instructions and do what God tells you to do. Look at the next verse. I want to go up one. Verse number nine. It says, so Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elijah. See, Naaman could get there because the king listened to the prophet. Sometimes the prophet will give you a word and you will never see purpose and destiny because you don't listen, because you won't pay attention. Because when that opportunity comes, you overlook it. Or you listen to somebody that don't even have a clue of what's going on. They're not even connected to God. And you're taking their advice. But you gotta, you got to surrender your mindset and surrender your will and listen to the voice of God speaking audibly through the word of God, through the, through, through the angels, through, through the Holy Spirit, and through men and women of God that have a relationship that's chosen by God. You got to listen to the voice of God coming forth through them. And then you got to line your life up with the will of God. And then you got to go through the process. And the problem with a lot of people is they don't want to go through the process. They don't want to listen. They don't want to be trained. They don't want to be taught. They don't want to be developed. They just want to do like a wild animal and run out in the wilderness wide open and crazy and think they're going to they're gonna be here and they will be there. That's right. You've got to stay humble. I like that. They, but they don't want to humble themselves. What they, what they want to do is they want to do everything. In other words, I got to get there. I'm running out of time. No, you're not. No, you're not. And people will tell you you're out of timing. People will tell you you're out of season. People will tell you they miss God. Don't pay those people no attention because they don't know what they're talking about. Only God knows the timing and the plan that he has for your life. I, 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 just, I just like it when people tell you you're out of time. Let me tell you something. If God waited until Moses, guess this now, Noah was 100 years old to give him children. If he waited until Sarah uh, 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 was, was, was 80 years old, I think, I think I got it right. Elizabeth, one of them, don't hold me to the name, waited until she was 80 years old to have a child. And, 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 and there's some people, God says, I'm going to bless you in your, in, your, in your latter years. That's why the scriptures say, your latter shall be greater than your former. In other words, you say, well, Lord, I don't look like it's going to happen for me. I'm 50 years old. I'm 60 years old. Don't look like it's going to happen. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you old in your mindset. But you got to realize something. God can do more for you in one year than you can do in a lifetime. He can do more for you in 10 minutes than you can do in a lifetime. You, you ever heard of people winning a lottery? You ever heard of people being in the divine time and getting an inheritance from somebody they didn't know that blessed them overly and abundantly and above, and they were in the worst timing of their life, they were in the worst place of their life. If, if, if that individual hadn't blessed them, they would be on the street or they would they would be homeless. And so what? Because God moves in timing. And see, let me tell you something. God will speak to people that will refuse to obey his voice. And they'll know God is speaking to them, and they'll refuse to obey their voice. But you know what? Not only do they miss the blessing that God has in store for them by obeying his voice, but they begin to lose their blessings because they refuse to obey God. In other words, what they're telling God is, I know you gave me this, but you can't really trust me with it. I know you gave me this, but it's mine now. And God says, no, no, no. The cattle on a thousand hills belong to me, and I can take it any time I get ready. Remember what Job said? The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Why? Because God has a time and God has a plan. We've got to finish this one at a time. Now notice, he's at the house of Elijah. It says, and Elijah sent the messenger unto him saying, go and wash in Jordan seven times and thou flesh shall come clean or shall come again to thee and thou shall be clean. Now notice, the, the Naaman was expecting the prophet to come and do something, but the prophet gave him simple instructions. Go to the river Jordan and dip seven times. That's what he told him. Go wash seven times. That was the instructions. A lot of us, we receive instructions, 
and we become angry and we get mad because we don't like the instructions instead of following the order. Now, your healing is in your obedience. Your miracle is in your obedience, listening and moving in the divine timing and the will of God. Now, look at this next verse. But Naaman was wroth. He became angry. He was upset and went away and said, Behold, look, I thought he would surely come out and, to me and stand and call on, his, call on the name of his Lord, his God, and strike this hand over me or over the place and recover the leper. Now notice, name and say, wait a minute. What I thought he would do didn't manifest. Let me tell you something. What you thinking God going to do and how you thinking God's going to do it, let me tell you something. You can forget that because God's plan is not your plan. He says, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So whatever you're thinking and however you're thinking is going to work, you might as well wash that away. Because guess what? The plan that God has, you, you can think until you're 50 and never figure out how God is going to do what he's planning to do in your life. You can think that you're 100 and never figure it out. Why? Because God strategizes different from the way we strategize. He says, I know the plans I have for you. They're good plans, and I'm paraphrasing, to prosper you and to bring you to an expected end. In other words, whatever you expect God to do, God says, I'm going to bring you to that place. But it's not going to happen the way you think it's going to happen. It's going to happen the way I've ordained for it to happen. It's not going to happen any other way. So if you're counting on God moving any other way than the way God has ordained and purposed it, you might as well kiss that way goodbye. Because God has a plan, and his plan is the way it's going to work. Not your plan, not my plan, but his plan. Now look at this. Naaman begins to become angry. He says, oh, look, I'm mad. Now, 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 watch what Naaman does. He starts calling all these other, <coughs> other, um, other oceans. Look at this. He says, <coughs> "Are not Abana and and Fair, Fair, Fair rivers of Damascus better? All the water uh, are better than all the water in Israel. May I not wash in them and be clean?" So he turned and went away in a rage. See. He didn't want to follow the instructions. Your miracle is in your obedience. He was given simple instructions, but he refused to do it. Let me tell you something. There are many believers out there today that has been given simple instructions. Go back. Return where you walked away from. Go do what I told you to do. Get in my closet. Get in my presence. I'm, I'm whipping your conscience. I'm wearing you out every night. Because you refuse to obey my voice. You're not going to have any peace. You're not going to have any rest. And guess what? You're not going any further because you refuse to obey. See, your miracle is in your obedience. And see, he refused to obey. He didn't want to do a simple order of instructions. Go take a bath. Now, let me tell you why. The River Jordan was known as one of the dirtiest, nastiest rivers in that time and in that season. See? And this is the reason Naaman didn't want to go in it because he said the water in the other rivers are better. Why can't I go wash in one of them? But no, no, your miracle is not where you want it. It's where God placed it. Uh-oh. See, see, your miracle is not where you expect it to be uh, or where you would like for it to be or, or where you're comfortable. Your miracle is not in that place where you enjoy being. Your miracle is in your, your, is in your uncomfort zone. Your miracle is in that place where you can't be co become complacent. See, your miracle is in that place where you will receive orders and instructions. Your miracle is in that place where you will mature and grow and develop in God. Your miracle is in that place of process. And see, Naaman didn't want to go to a place that he was unfamiliar with. He, he was familiar with, notice, he talked about the places he was familiar with, but he said, no, Naaman didn't tell him to go someplace where he was familiar with. You know why? Because he was a man of high stature. He was a man of pride. He was a man of valor. He was a man of war. And as a result of being all of these things, he wanted to go someplace where he was comfortable. He wanted to go someplace where he was familiar. A lot of people like to go to familiar territory, but the message that God has for you today is your blessing. It's not in familiar territory. It's in unfamiliar territory. When the Lord sent me 170 miles 110 miles correction to man around that was unfamiliar territory i drove in the snow i drove in the sleet i drove in the ice i drove in sliding in sometimes i came down the hill sliding down sometimes but god was with me coming around those mountains going up those valleys and up those hills he was with me every step of the way guess what it was unfamiliar territory 
But guess what? If God leads and you follow him, it doesn't matter about the territory. Because he said in the word, I will never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you. And see, Naaman's problem was he was getting ready to go someplace. He wanted to go where he was familiar. He wanted to go in a place that was clean. In other words, he, he wanted to go someplace where, where what he needed would not work. See, and this is what a lot of saints are doing. They're going places with, and trying to receive what they need from God in places that cannot produce it. They're going in places that cannot produce the miracle, the anointing, the fire of the Holy Ghost, signs, wonders, and miracles. They're going in places where they will never receive the measure of kingdom that God has orchestrated and ordained their lives to because they want to go in places at where they're familiar. And let me tell you something. Your miracle, and I'll say it again, is not in familiar territory. It's not in your comfort zone. It's not in that place where you feel comfortable. Your miracle is going to be in a place where you are not comfortable. It's going to be in a place where you're going to be told it just like it is. You're going to be rebuked. You're going to be put in order. You're going to be put in place. You're going to line up with the will of God. In order to receive power, you've got to follow. Let me tell you something. Go back and look in, 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 in the law. Go back and look in, in the laws of the word. The men of God that moved in the miraculous, that moved in power and authority, they matured. They grew up. They had to follow. In other words, you cannot lead if you're not willing to follow. Let me say that again. You cannot lead if you're not willing to follow because God cannot trust you to do what he instructs you to do. You cannot lead if you will not obey the voice of God. If you will not fast, if you will not pray, if you will not study and read the word of God. What makes you think God should trust you with his seed? What makes you think God should trust you to be on the air all over the world? What makes you think God should trust you to impart the word and activate his sons and daughters when you won't obey his voice, when you won't follow simple instructions? I'm out of my comfort zone, but guess what? I'm where I'm supposed to be in the divine timing and purpose of will of God. It is not about me being comfortable, but it's about me decreeing and proclamating and declaring and advancing the kingdom of God. And this is what ministry is all about. It's about being imparted in. It's about being equipped. It's about being built and, 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 and positioned to build the body of Christ, to advance the body of Christ. Naaman had an assignment, but he, he was too angry to see his miracle. Some saints are too angry right now to see if they would just follow the voice of God, the miracle that they're asking God for would happen overnight. I remember when the Lord told me to go look for a house, and I shared this one time before. And the Lord for me, told me to go look for a house, and I went and looked for a house, and the man had this house on sale, the very man that I'll tell you about that I worked for. He had the house on sale. He had the house for sale. And the Lord sent me to this man, and I went to this man and looked at his house. And when I looked at his house, the very man that gave me the position to work my, my, my boss, Gave me the position to work. See, God will give you favor with people in high places. This man owned the store chain of, of cellular phone companies, a chain of them. And God sent me to him. And when I went to this man, I didn't have a nickel in my pocket. And I was counting on my, my, my tax return to come forth. Let me tell you what God did. See, your blessing is in places you least expect it to be in. And what happened was, when the Lord sent me to this man... He said, go to the house. And I looked at it in the paper. Went to the house. And as soon as I put it, I said, Lord, they got a for sale sign in the yard. God said, go talk to him. I went and talked to him. I said, well, I'm interested in the house. I said, but I can't buy it right now. I was honest with him. I was up front. Guess what? The next day, he took the house off the market and called me and told me he took it off the market. Then the man called me back and told me that another couple applied for the house. But see, what I did, I didn't follow the instruction. God told me to tell the man I wanted the house. And I told the man, let me think about it overnight. And when I left, another couple came and took the house. And I lost the house because I was being disobedient. Guess what God did to me? He made me become homeless for 10 months because I disobeyed his voice. Let me tell you something. When you're getting ready to walk in greatness, and when you're getting ready to walk in the power and the authority of God, he will put you in a process. And when you disobey his voice, you will suffer for it. You will go through for it. And for 10 months, he made me suffer. But guess what? He was merciful and gave me another chance. And he said, look in the paper. And when I looked in the paper, the very residence that I looked at 10 months earlier was on the market again. And it was for sale. And I went back to the guy. And I said, look, I said, I, I said this house is for sale again? He said, yeah. I, said, I, didn't, I didn't tell him I'm interested in it this time. I said, I want it. And God opened the door. See? God will cause you to suffer. But when you repent and line back up with his will, he'll open the door. And when the man opened the door, I didn't have a dime to put down on that house. 
And when he opened the door and he took the sign back out of the yard the second time, see, God will give you another chance. When he took that sign up out of the yard the second time, this time I obeyed the voice of God. And the Lord said, go tell him, you, you pay him the down payment when your tax return comes. Well, the Lord knew my tax return wasn't coming because I got a letter from the IRS telling me that my tax return had been delayed. And I called him, I said, man, go ahead and put the house back on the market. My tax re return is delayed. The Lord spoke to this man and told him the house was mine. One day I was on my way to Bible study. Nobody knew I was living in my car. Nobody knew I was living in a position while staying, in a, staying with, a, with, with a gentleman in a room about the size of a closet. And, and, and when his girlfriend came over, I had to stay in my car. Nobody knew about that. I lived that. That's the life of a prophet. That's the life of an apostle. That's the life of an evangelist. That's the life of a teacher. That's the life you go through when you're anointed for God. Nobody knew about that. I never shared it. But the point is this. When God has a plan, you got to follow his instructions. I went back to that man's house. He called me one Wednesday night and told me to stop by. And I told his brother a couple of times I couldn't afford it because I, my taxes hadn't came. He called me one night. I went to the house. I'm going to show you how God would work. Went to his house. I walked out in the yard. He was in the back, three acres, cutting the lawn. He stopped cutting the lawn and took me inside the house and started showing me around. I said, Lord, I done told this man I can't afford this. I said, Lord said, shut up. Be quiet. I said, okay, Lord. He showed me around the house. He said, this is your living room. This is your dining room. He said, this is the bedrooms in the house. He said, downstairs, here's your basement and what it looks like. He took me out and said, these are your property lines. He turned around and looked at me and he said, let's go back in the house. We went in the house. He talked to me for a few minutes and he took the keys out of his pocket and laid them on the counter. He said, the Lord told me this is your house. He said, move in it when you get ready. I'm going to leave the lights and the water on for you. Now, let me tell you something. When you do it God's way, he will work it out every time. Here I am in a 2,600 square foot house with a TV, the clothes on my back, and a blow mattress. That's all I had. In one year, God filled my house at the point. I had to tell people, 2,600 square feet, I couldn't take any more furniture. In one year. And I didn't pick up my phone and call one person for anything. One person. I did. One person. And I wanted to buy it from them. But God filled my house with everything I needed. Let me tell you something. When God has a plan for your life, Naaman could receive his miracle. All he had to do was obey the voice of God. Look at verse number 15 and we're finishing. Then went down. Hold on a second. I'm, I'm jumping the verse ahead of myself. One second. Look at verse 13. It says, And his servant came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee some, to do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather then when he saith to thee, wash and be clean. Then, see, somebody had to come and convince him that it was the right thing to do. Because they heard the instructions. Well, you're not doing what you're told, but somebody heard the instructions. And they'll come to you and they'll say, well, the man of God told you to do this. Why are you doing that? These were the instructions, but you're doing everything but what you were told to do. This is how this is how Christians live today. They do everything but what God instructed them to do, and they expect God to move. Let me tell you something. Until you obey the voice of God, he's not going to move. God cannot go against his laws, and he will not go against his word. If he's giving you an order of instructions, you will do it his way, or you will not see the manifestation. You will do it the way God has ordained. So if you're one of those that's fighting and kicking against the brick, you remember the story in the Bible of Paul when he was Saul, how he killed uh, 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 Christian believers, and God smacked him on, on the donkey one day and said, why do you kick against the brick? Why are you forsaking me? Why are you coming up against me, paraphrasing? You can't win this battle. And before he knew it, guess what? He joined Christ. He became a born-again believer. But he still went to prison. He still died in prison. But the key, the, the, but the key this is my point. When you mess up, because see, Paul went to prison, and when he went to prison, Paul knew he wasn't getting ready to get out of jail. He knew they were getting ready to, to kill him. 
See, that's the reason he said, I have fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. He could preach that because when he was in prison, he knew he was getting ready to die. He'd been to prison and had gotten out and been to prison, but he went to prison. And when he went that time, he stayed. He lost his life there. But he was a messenger for the kingdom of God. Paul was the one God revealed that the gospel of the kingdom was not just to the Jews, but it was to everybody that was a Gentile. What is a Gentile? A Gentile is anybody that's not a Jew. That's a Gentile. But God revealed unto him. So you see, you got to realize. Where you're walking right now, your next move in God is determined by your willing to obey. Look at this last verse and we finish. Then went he down and dipped seven himself seven times in Jordan. According to the saying of the man of God, he followed the instructions. Your blessing is in your obedience. According to the saying of the man of God, he, his miracle <clears throat> was not in one dip. It was not in two dips, three dips, four dips, five dips, six dips. But he had to go through the process seven times. Seven is the number of completion. In other words, closure of what you're going through will come into manifestation when you follow the order of the instructions. Naaman was a dip seven times. He says, according to the man of God and his flesh, in the last paragraph, and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was cleansed. Notice, he could receive his cleansing. You can receive your miracle when you obey the voice of of God and stop listening to the outside noise. Let me say that again. Obey the voice of God and stop listening to the outside noise. Stop being distracted by other folk who refuse to obey God. Those people that tell you, I wouldn't do this and I wouldn't do that, they don't have a relationship with God. Why are you listening to them? They can't do one thing for you and what God can do for you, you can't receive it because you won't obey the voice of God, but you listen to all this outside noise. All these people don't have no relationship. They ain't thinking about God. They're living in sin, iniquity, ungodliness, unholiness, and the last thing they want to think about. And then what they're doing is they're keeping you out of your blessed place. They're keeping you out of your abundant place because you refuse to obey and you listen to them. And guess what? You're suffering and they're suffering too. Negative-minded people will not obey the word of God. Negative thinking people will always come at you with a reason why you shouldn't obey the voice of God. They will never tell you why you should. They will never tell you why it's okay. Even those in the, standing behind the pulpit, even the preachers, even the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, those, those people that have a form of godliness but deny the power of God, those folk that operate in the antichrist spirit standing inside the church, Religious demons and religious and traditional devils that's in the church. That's what I said, religious demons and, and, and traditional devils standing behind the pulpit trying to lead the body of Christ and have no power, have no authority, and have no anointing. Why are you listening to them instead of obeying the voice of God? You know the Lord has told you to leave that ministry years ago, and you're still sitting there hoping for your miracle. Let me tell you something. Until you obey the voice of God, there'll be no miracle. There'll be no breakthrough. There'll be no change. You will go just like the children of Israel around and around and around and around for 40 years in this in the wilderness you'll have a wilderness experience until you make up in your mind i'm going to obey god i don't care what nobody says because guess what until you obey god your miracle cannot manifest with that being said let us pray now father we give you glory out and praise we bless you now for this word father we thank you for the word we we repent when we fail to obey your voice we repent when we fail to move as you've spoken and instructed us to follow the in order of instructions that you've given us. We repent and ask your forgiveness in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, Father, we ask you to anoint us to become obedient and submissive to your voice, that you will be glorified, that you will be edified, Father, and that you'll be exalted. We ask it now in the precious and mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we ask you to bind every attack of Satan that will come against this word now. But Father, activate this word in the hearts and the minds of those that are viewing it now and those that will see this recording in the future. Activate this word in them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And bind Satan and every demon in the airway that will try to steal it now. In Jesus' name, we seal this word and this prayer. Every crevice, every crack, seed, root, and fruit. And we activate it in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Now, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says in, in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God is raised from the dead, 
thou shalt be saved. It says, with the mouth confession is made, and with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. So if you don't know Jesus Christ today, I want to introduce you to Jesus Christ and invite you to accept him as your Lord and Savior. Just say, Father, I'm a sinner. Say your word says to confess your son Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. Father, your word says that Jesus died and rose for my sins and for the sins of the world. Just say that. And say, Father, today, I confess that I'm a sinner and I repent of my sins and my ungodliness. Say that. Say, Father, today, I accept Jesus Christ, your son, as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. Now, if you just prayed that prayer, you just accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life. And I'll say so many times, the angels in heaven are rejoicing for one more soul that has entered the glories of our Lord. And I want to say to you, get into a Bible-believing church, and until then, get into the Bible and the New Testament and begin to read the first four books of the Gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. These four chapters will tell you about the birth of Christ, will tell you how he moved in the miraculous and the power and the authority, why he was born, or how he stepped through 40 in two generations to save the world of their sins, that those that were to embrace and accept him and call on the name of Jesus, they would be saved, and why we accept and save, serve him as our Lord and our Savior. Read those books. It also talks about the signs and the miracles that the apostles walked in, the apostolic that he trained them uh, how to move in the miraculous just as he did. And that's what apostolic is. It's moving in signs, wonders, miracles, and demonstrations. It's moving in the very manifestation glory that Jesus Christ walked in upon the earth. So we give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. And I say to you, welcome to the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And for those of you that have joined me today, thank you so much for being on this live stream. And for those that will view this video in the future, God bless you, you. And especially, we give God the glory, the honor, and the praise for this opportunity to come into your homes and your cars and your living room, wherever you may be at, on your jobs. We thank God for the opportunity to decree and to declare the gospel of the kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ into your house and into your home. We give God glory, honor, and praise for you now. And this is Apostle Barry Space of Barry Space Ministry. Join me live on, on, on um, TikTok every Sunday at 12.15 Eastern Standard Time. You can join me, join me live daily on Roku uh, with Barry Spates Live Network on Roku. Barry Spates Live Network. We come live with a lot. Matter of fact, we're live right now uh, on the network. But God is getting the glory and the honor and praise. So feel free to join me live. I'm also on YouTube. Go to my YouTube page. And, and it's Barry Spates Ministries on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and sign up or subscribe. There's hundreds of videos there. I'm sure that will be a blessing to you. Just go there and just let the Lord pour that anointing in your spirit. Thank you so much for your faithful support. For those of you that would like to donate, you don't have to give. It's not required. But if you want to donate, you feel free to donate to Barry Spates um, um, at um, Barry Spates at um, Cash App. Barry Spates at Cash App. Feel free to donate for those of you that would like to give. It's not required. But if you feel like the Holy Spirit is leading you to release a seed, feel free to do so. God bless you, you, and especially you. And until the next time, bye now. Blessings to all of you. Blessings.